three sides of the coin this week. We celebrate 10 freaking years of talking about nothing. 10 years of talking about KISS. Over 500 episodes. Yeah, this is our 10th anniversary, people. And what it's our do we do to set? Tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's our creatures of the night tour. What do we do? What do we do to celebrate ten years? Talk talk about kiss. talk nothing. kiss and more about nothing. <laughs> now, seriously, we talk about sales awards. We talk about collecting for financial gain. We talk about autographs. This was a fun, classic. This is what three sides of the coin is about. It's three sides of the coin. Talking all things. Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Three Sides of the Coin. Guess what? Ten years. Ten years. I've been wrangling this fucking train wreck. <laughs> That's longer than some people's prison sentence. <laughs> it's longer than marriages, prison sentences, bans. Yep, we've yep. been doing that. We you so so just so everybody knows, you got Mike, Mark, Tommy, Lisa will probably jump in and join us when she gets back from voting. Um, we are celebrating ten years of three sides of the coin today. Ooh. I think. I think. I think. We actually recorded our first episode on December 7th, 10 years ago, and then it came out around December 12th or something like that. But this is roughly going to be the 10-year um, anniversary. And, you know, 500 episodes a few weeks ago, 10 years now. God. Who'd have drunk it? Although I wasn't around. For tired. There's a lot of fucking people that are just pissed. Just pissed. <laughs> Who had money on us not lasting? Everybody. <laughs> I Everybody. sure didn't. I I shouldn't say I didn't think we would last, but I never thought about it. I mean, it, no. it, I think I approached this literally week by week by week by week. You know, that that's that's the way I looked at it. It's just like, all right, we're going to just do another show this week. Yeah, so I, I started getting emails about this show um, because for the for the youngins and the people who joined in on episode 200, uh, I wasn't here at the beginning. So I said, well, there's the funny part. You, you got you two will especially appreciate this. They're like, hey, have you checked out, you know, three sides of the whatever, blah, blah, podcast? I'm like, what the fuck's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, is that like You're still not sure? Line? What's that? You're still not sure. I know, I know, I know. But I remember getting emails about your show, and then they start telling me, I'm like, Tommy Summers. I'm like, the guy from Minnesota. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know him. And they're like, yeah, Mike. I said, oh, the guy from uh, from Kiss Online. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I know those guys. They're pretty cool. They'll check it out. I'm like. I don't have time. <laughs> no, I'd look at you now. He still doesn't have time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so one of the one of the one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to revisit. I guess you could call it revisiting the episode one topic, but mainly I wanted to do this because I think we need to basically do the re-record. Of that episode, well, well, hold on, and, hold on. and get and get rid and get rid of the other guy that was on there. Hold on, the first topic was me, wasn't it? Like episode <laughs> sixty six or something. That, <laughs> that's ex that's exactly that's basically when three sides of the coin started was when Mark joined us. Everything but he prior, didn't, but he everything didn't join us on, but he didn't join us at sixty six. Wasn't that, I don't even remember. It, no, what, because when did we I... did we did a bunch just the two of us. Because yeah, we're you you to you out were to do. you you yeah. You first joined us as just a guest to talk oh, yeah, about yeah, your yeah, collection, yeah. and 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 at the same time, Tommy and I were you know quote auditioning um, other people to find a third host, and 
I remember after you were done with the guest appearance, Tommy and I were like, oh, Mark was just like a perfect fit. I mean, he just had the chemistry. We felt we got along great. And we're like, let's just see if Mark wants to do this. And I remember thinking and thinking, shit, there's no way in hell because Mark doesn't have a fucking clue what he's doing on this. Nope. Nope. <laughs> shit hasn't changed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, literally, Tommy, before you got here, Mark is like, God damn fucking lights. I look terrible. I got to turn the light off, turn the light. It's every, it every, every freaking get... week. It is something with Mark. And how, how hard is it to just get a soft light to put in front, like behind your computer, in front of your face? Like just a, even just a, a small lamp. Hold on. I saw that problem. Okay. <laughs> We are, the only, pod, we are bother. the only video <laughs> podcast that one of our co-hosts uses a flashlight to light us up. No, we don't invest in gear. No, <laughs> we don't invest in lighting. <laughs> Wait, why, why are we, we even here? Yeah, our audio. Honestly, why does shit. anybody listen? That's a oh that's God. the that's the million dollar question. Why does anybody listen? Because we we're, we're, we're like that. We're like that local horror show that you guys. Every city had like their own. Yes, yeah, or count incorporated. Vampire. Yeah, you know. Oh my god, about as low budget to no budget as you can get. But hey, you guys still keep coming in. You know, we're like the Rios. We we, you know? we we we, yeah, we still want, we'll make more. We still have fun. So as again, until we're not having fun, we're gonna keep showing up and we'll keep doing this. And why would um, we have pyro if we don't have to? Why would we what? Add pyro if we don't have to. You know, they show up. Pyro. Show up let's listen. hold up. Hold up lighters. There's Lighter. our pyro. There's our pyro. <laughs> there you go. Hey, speaking of which, I got a little look. Look, look at I'm wearing new to the rotation. New to the rotation. The that. brand new wasp shirt yeah. with on the sides and nice. Tell you the big, as, the, uh, the big boy sizes. Yeah, yeah, we had to go fat guy sizes because they didn't have fat guy sizes originally. But it was fun. <laughs> be, being that being that Mike Brambles, I look giving you the stroke on this one here, Michael. You made it fucking happen. There was complaints and wham, you're like, yeah, okay, I, I was, fixed. I was gonna, I was gonna say that the the tour merchandise and it might still be the case even now on the road only goes up to two XL. No, no told, when I there was just extra large, it was it. Well, it, well, yeah, and and there's also been an ongoing problem of wasp fans are like kiss fans in a good <laughs> way. A lot of fat fans. Well, there's a lot of big fat fans, yes, <laughs> but they buy a crap load, a and I mean a crap load of merchandise. I mean, there was there were some of the early shows where we had full stock of everything and at the end of the night literally every single piece of merch had been purchased every way, size are, of every sweet, every design man. so the what wasp, I love it. I love the okay so what do you do okay so let's cuz people like the behind the scenes what do you do when you're faced with that dilemma how do you solve well, it quickly <laughs> that that's part of what wasp was dealing with at the beginning of the tour so if anybody went to the beginning of the tour Vegas was fully stocked. Vegas mm -hmm. sold out of every freaking shirt and every size and style possible. The next night was Anaheim. I think Anaheim only had wasp flags and maybe the pins and everything else was gone because the merch company couldn't print enough fast enough to get it there. They couldn't get the tour restocked for a couple more days. And even when that was happening, the Wasp fans were still buying. I mean, again, it was like, I've, I've got a video I need to post of the line for the merchandise at the Mandalay Bay House of Blues. It freaking ran out of the House of Blues and around and through the casino. It was a long really? ass line of just waiting to buy merch. And so, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but. Hey Tommy, you have no video of him, man. There we go. Yeah. So, so, so on top of that, most of the merch went up to two XL if it was in stock, and we were quickly hearing from fans 
like our good buddy Mark, who were like, hey, where's the big boy stuff? I need like 3XL, 4XL. Some people were like, you got 5XLs? And <laughs> some fans were like, holy shit, are you selling like, sales here for boats it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, it's like a don't. big and tall shop at a rock show so so <laughs> i i found another merch company that i know here in san francisco and i said dude how quickly can you get an online store set up and how quickly can we start delivering and he's like if you get me the artwork from the existing merch i can get this so it's ready to ship the first week of december and we started taking pre-orders, I don't know, Mark, what was it, before Thanksgiving, probably. Yeah. And uh, But the key there was we had sizes and everything up to 5XL on, online. Awesome. You should be able to get it to anybody that wants it. Yeah, well, well that, you know, that, that, that's, I'll, that's I'll, what we I'll, were doing. Yeah, you, all kidding aside, because technically I'm a 2X, but I've learned when shopping that it's easier to, for me to get a 3X and then dry it on high heat in the dryer if it's, you know. Too big. A little, yes, yes. So I've just learned. And then it's, it's funny. I, I, I Boy, this is going to sound terrible. I bought a 2X shirt from the Black Sabbath store. And I took it when I when I got it home. It, it was so small. And, and I, I, I went to my wife and I'm like, look at this tag that's just two X. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, look at this fuck so again. So I've just found through trial and error. That's how I buy my rock shirts. If I have to send away for them. So you get a three X and then you shrink her down a little bit in the heat and then it shows off your sexy figure. Right. It does. It does. So, it shows off his, his 12 pack. Yes. <laughs> what, look, look, man. Why would you want the twelve pack where you could have the whole keg? Well, I was going to say, Mark, Mark doesn't even have a twelve pack. Mark's got a keg. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Chicks dig him, and so you know it makes All sense. See, he just lets some of you guys in on how he scores. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm actually happy to see Mark got his shirt because they were supposed to be. Yeah. We promised people first week of December, and I'm like, "Are we delivering? Are we delivering?" Yep. And yep, this they showed up as promised. Yesterday. Yes, this technically came yesterday, Great. and I think I had to wait just a week. A matter of fact, the original what's today's date? The sixth. Yeah, I think Nine, it was six. six. Yeah, six. It was the sixth because I remember the original date. They said estimated date was the eighth. Or I just remember it's my dad's birthday, and it said the eighth. And I'm like, cool. So fuck when I got home from work yesterday, I'm like shit, had it on the fifth. So, I mean, that's again, that that's how customer service works. You, you know? deliver what's <laughs> promised. It, on ain't, time. it ain't rocket science. <laughs> it just isn't. On time. Well, oh, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm happy to see it in rotation and I'm happy that Mark got it. And that means other Wasp fans. I mean, we, we sold, that first week the Wasp store was open, we sold so much merchandise online. I mean, it was just crazy. It was it was fans who couldn't go to the tour who wanted something, and it was fans who went but couldn't buy anything at the shows because it was sold out. And, you know, I'm just – I'm happy that we were able to get it up so quickly, get it fulfilled, and, you know, make make the fans happy. So and let me tell you, if you're sitting on the fence, this shirt is fucking. I mean, I love the stuff on the sleeves. If you're, we're thinking about getting a, I can in the light, I can see. That. And the show is great too. I don't think we should. We haven't talked much about it, but I thought it was a great performance, and people left happy. So if you haven't seen them yet, and you can go do so now, Michael, I don't know what you can I say. Think, I, 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 I think say. I think I honestly I think by the yes by the time people are watching this, the U.S. tour will be over. Right. So the last show in Los Angeles is on December 11th. Okay. Um, but, I mean, Blackie's already talked about this. There are discussions and offers for more shows in the U.S. next year. There's nothing that's been confirmed. There's nothing more that can be talked about. But it, it, it comes down to business people. 
when this tour did such great business, I mean, shows, I would venture to say, I, I don't have the, the ticket counts in front of me, but 50% of the shows on this tour, and it was like a 35-date tour, sold out. And we're talking oh, no. sell, sellouts up to 2,000 people. Yeah. So when, when, when a band has a tour that sells that well, the promoters don't give a crap who the band is. They don't give a crap about anything other than cha-ching, I see money. Can I get this show next year? And we'll put it into a bigger venue. We'll do multiple dates, whatever. So you can be, you can be damn sure the promoters around the U.S. are lining up, wanting to get in. Now, it will always be helpful, and Blackie has said this at every show, the, the promoters on this tour didn't believe it was going to sell. Right. And, and, and that's not a line, that's not something he was saying to hype the audience. It's 100% true. The promoters booked this but didn't think it could sell more than 500 tickets a night. And the fans showed up. 2,000, 1,500, 1,700. I mean, they, oh, they, yeah. just did, they, they just did two sold-out shows in the Chicago suburbs. Um, call your local promoter, whoever it is. And that just might mean calling your local rock venue and just saying, can you guys book Wasp? You know? They'd be uh, we, great we, at we, the we, Palace we, in St. Paul. Well, I was going to say we got a lot. We got a lot of comments from fans in in, in Minnesota who are like, "How come Wasp didn't come to Minnesota? You don't like the promoters. Us. The promoters don't believe in it. The they, promoters didn't want to book it because and and this is you know Blackie has said this in some interviews. Any band, not just Wasp, any band out there, given the chance for a fair and decent payday, will play any freaking place on the planet yeah. there isn't other than bands that might be banned from going to certain towns because of things that have happened in the past like blackie said you know for years they were wasp was banned from ever playing in vegas um bands don't sit around and go all right we fucking hate minneapolis screw those fans let's go to milwaukee instead no they would more than happy play Milwaukee, Green Bay, Minneapolis, Duluth, Fargo. If every one of those promoters wanted to step up and book a show, a freaking band is going to go as long as there's dates to do it. Yep. And so great call your venues. And, and you know what? I mean, this, this isn't just for Wasp. I mean, I'm partial because I work with them. But if you've got another favorite band that you want to come to town, don't really cry to the artist about it. You got to go cry to your local rock venue, your local promoters. But then say, show we up want when it. they do come. Well, yeah, you got to still buy the ticket then. Yeah, yeah you, gotta, you actually got to go. Exactly. Well, you got to buy the ticket. You don't have to show up, but just buy the ticket. <laughs> Look, I'm, I, I'm, I, Tom and I were talking earlier today. I'm over the moon, man. Uh, Buck Cherry and Skid Row are coming to detroit I saw that yeah yeah i cannot yeah. wait to see uh uh you know that's a great package yeah and it starts in early march so for those of you it was just announced today so please hop on buck cherry or skid rose website to see the dates there are still some that are missing though because i know i talked to mazer and he had told me what the last date was and that hasn't appeared yet so there's still some more they're adding but they're doing a pretty good run and I think that's I'm so excited to see it. Billy confirmed he's gonna visit the he's gonna visit the he's gonna visit the cave. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He'll be he'll be right in this spot. <laughs> you better bring someone with him. <laughs> I'm warning you. Better, him. Have, an better have an emergency contact, Billy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, Billy, you need an emergency contact and a safe word. If 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 this emergency contact, seriously, Billy, if the emergency contact doesn't hear from you within one hour, they should be instructed to automatically call the local Detroit police. Mm -hmm. well, it's funny because I said to him, man, I can't wait to hear the new stuff. He's like, I can't wait to see the collection. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So. And the first single for them also too, so you guys know, comes out in March. I don't know the name of it, but the first single drops in March. The album comes out in June. Awesome. Awesome. So um, before we get into kind of revisiting and redoing episode one for our 10th anniversary, one, an interesting question popped up in our Three Sides of the Coin Facebook group that I thought could be fun to address real quick here. So somebody had posted a picture of the Psycho Circus go fancy gold album plaque, the, yes. the big one, and it was presented to Eric Carr, and they were like, what's wrong with this picture? And people are like, well, it was given to Eric Carr. He wasn't in the band. He's dead. He didn't play in the album. You know, people were just trying to wrap their heads around why he got one. And I mean, here's, here's the way these, these official awards work. There's really no rhyme nor reason. Anybody can get one. I mean, we know as fans, you can go to kissonline.com right now. Don't purchase anything from them, but they will sell you an RIA award, a legit one with the seal and your name on it. That's it. They'll sell, they'll, they'll do that. So prior to bands selling these awards to fans, anybody that the band or the record label wanted to give an award to could do it. I mean, it's just a matter of getting the approval of the band or the record label, and then who's going to pay for the production of the award. You know, like, like two of my awards, the two greatest hits ones I got years after the greatest hits came out, but I worked on promoting them. I had to buy the awards myself. I mean, they were only like, I don't know, not even 200 bucks an award. Yeah. But before I could do that, when I contacted the award company, they were like, okay, we need to get approval from Universal Music to sell you the award, which was just a matter of reaching out to Universal and Universal. Said, oh, yeah, of course, you can do that. You worked with the band. You worked on those albums. Um, so you don't have to be in the band for that album to get the award. You don't have to play on the album. God knows I didn't. I've never played on, I got a Kiss Psycho Circus Award. I didn't play on it. Kiss gave it to me because I marketed and helped promote the album. The, and, you know, Mark, you've got a bunch of them that you bought from old people in the Kiss family. I mean, those people I, didn't I will tell you, play I, on it. I, 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 I actually have a weird take on this. Um, yeah, I have a whole room full. Matter of fact, I have almost all of them. Um, I'm missing. And what I mean by I have at least one of every single record that charted. I don't get super geeky like I need the gold and the platinum. I just because these things are so mine are all I, not to sound like a dick, but floaters. mine are all real. Um, you know, right. they're floaters. The, at least my ones from the 70s are all floaters. And and you know, they're the real deal. But you know, they're kind of expensive, so I don't need a gold and a platinum. Um, but I, I, I don't like the fact, well, put, put it this way. The ones that you can buy through through Kiss Online, don't get me wrong. If you have them, that's like super cool. I'm, I'm happy that makes you happy. But that's not something I'd collect. However, with that, with that said, you know, I, I have one. If you want, I'll go grab it. Yeah. I, I I've got yeah, one. Yeah, get I out of the chair. You stand up. Yeah, hold on. I'll be right back. It took us 10 years, but Mark finally got out of the chair. <laughs> we what did, we said the right thing. What, what was the right thing? Because he's actually getting up and getting one to show you people. <laughs> took us 10 years, but here he is yeah, here he out is. of his chair. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I think that I feel like it's kind of a thing of the past. Like they've removed them. The industry has removed itself so much from giving out awards of gold and platinum records that a lot of the younger collectors i, I don't think collect them well they used to be you know, let, let, gold, let's, holy let's, grail let's be let's be honest very few bands legitimately sell a half a million to a million albums right. to get an award right so there's there's a lot of bands and there's nothing wrong with this that are making awards to commemorate 
a million streams or or what? Well, I'm gonna I have mean, they, that. I'm gonna have to get my stupid Halo look on because wow, it's getting up again. <sighs> I'm doing this for the fucking fans. That's why. There must be a burger across the room. <laughs> burger across the room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Now, speaking of which, now I got this a long time ago, but I got I got this from Loretta. Yeah. Now. Well, and explain what a floater is, because it ain't a turn. Oh, the- this one. This one's not a. No, these. Neither of these are floaters. Okay. But this is a video award made out to her brother. Now, he'd, he'd been deceased by then, but the family. What video? Uh, for Confidential. Okay. You know, but it's, it, again, it's it's still a cool award. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's the official, you know, these, this is a real, genuine um, award. There's, there's a handful of companies in the U.S., that well, here's one are authorized I'm, to make a legitimate awards. Correct. This one, I, I've said this last week on the show or a couple times ago. I still, I'm just starting to put my basement back from May because I'm just now workload at work, slowing down. I got time to spend. I haven't put this up yet. This was Chris Lentz. And this is from Canada for Animal Eyes. Nice. I haven't put this up yet, but I, you know, just a quick count as I was walking in here, because I have a whole wall full of them. Um, I have 22 awards. Um, so that obviously includes the solo records, but I know I'm missing a couple. Um, this, this was one that I was missing. Um, so my, my point in, in this is this, I don't want, like the creatures award that kiss is selling and again if you have it that's awesome i am not but again for me i'd, I'd rather get you want the awards that have some yeah. history to them yeah yes yes and again if you look this is this is the canadian recording industry award no doubt yep yeah so hold on i'm, I'm gonna go grab another one too hold on yeah that's three times. Three times. Dude, we are. He's on a roll. Wow. I shouldn't say much because it's like we don't want to jinx this whole thing. And, and you know what's interesting? He has a fucking light in his room. Look. I know, but he see. turns it off because he doesn't like the way he looks with the light on. Well, what we do, we can't do anything about that. It is what it is. <laughs> it, it's his looks. We can't yeah. fix that. Yeah. <laughs> you know jesus christ <laughs> oh my god oh, vanity and a couple more modern ones freaking michigan right now. it's just that i have to put these up still but michael i have the same one but mine was made out to i don't know some guy yeah. i don't know yeah i've got i've got one of those that's made out to me that uh i can't remember if i got it I think Jay Gilbert arranged for me to get that one did, because did he was you working they, for they, Universal. They've got, again, this, because they don't, did you notice these are, I mean, you have the same one. They have the floaters. Yep. Can you, you know, please explain to not, people what that means? Fl- 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 floaters just mean if you look at the award, it kind of looks like the album cover is, is floating above the background. It's, it's a little raised up. Yeah, they just That's put a little piece of foam in between the it, back. It, exactly. The, yep. Here's something super cool, but just because you don't see these kinds of a video award from Canada. Yep. Because it went, was it gold or platinum? Platinum. It went platinum in Canada for video sales. Nice. Yeah, well, my, my point is there's different kinds of, and next week, most likely, you'll. I'm going to be out there again where I want to be. Because I'll have room. Four times. Oh. You turned the light off. Yeah. Why would you so, turn the light off? Because I fucking get that stupid halo effect. I look like a fucking retard. Um, when I oh, look no, at the, the, you look like that whether the light's on or not. One more question right there. What makes Mark look dumber? Lights on or lights, lights off? On, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't care what anyone thinks. 
I was because he's, I turned he's the not turning on. the lights on, whether it's voted in favor I, of it or not. I, I turned the lights on so you guys could see what I was talking about. Well, I know, and you were on a roll. I can't believe you stopped. But I, I get what you're saying, Mark. I mean, again, those awards that Kiss Online sells and other bands are starting to do that too. Um, again, they're, 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 very, they're, they're very cool. They're amazing designs. They are, they've got the real RIAA foil on it, which, you know, if you remember back during like the Psycho Circus tour, Kiss sold a shitload of those fake awards. Who are they by? California Arts or something where they literally would just, they would just do, take. Do, do, do you want me to go grab one of those? Yeah, grab, <laughs> grab one. Grab one. Yeah. Well, I, cause I, again, I'm starting to move stuff back. I think I have one of those ticket wheels here yeah i mean you know they would just take an album they take an album cover they'd make their own little fake plaque and they'd say commemorating the release of whatever that's not a legitimate sales award a legitimate sales award has the foil stamp on it from the riaa or the canadian association or if it's a european label there's a foil stamp that makes it a legitimate, real sales award. That's the that's sort of quote the holy grail of awards. Now, I'm with Mark. I wouldn't go just buy an award that I wasn't part of. I only wanted awards for albums that and and bands that I did something with. Um, but again, if you wanted to go out and get them and they look amazing on the wall, they're great conversation pieces, go for it. Totally but Mark, cool. Mark, Mark's totally into collecting the awards that have history because of who they but were they given look, to. This is one of those. Cool, I still think this is cool. Yeah. That's just a fun plaque that Kiss made up with ads, ticket stubs. You know, that, that's not a real sales award Here, here's but the, it's still a nice funny, looking award certificate of authenticity <laughs> yeah well it's like it's going just, to the, any one of those sees, it's got it's got a a, a a reprint of a ticket it's also got the dodge the los angeles a postcard with the the date stamped on it yep again well, this is a nice display piece yeah it's like but, the stuff but you i don't know what a sports store a sports so. memorabilia collectible yeah. collectible store. You know where they take a guitar, they frame the guitar, they put an album cover, they make it look really nice. Although, although Again, the, those the, those there's nothing wrong with those. It's just those are the, not the, legit sales that's, awards. That's the point I'm trying to make to the fans. You can buy stuff like this. It's cool. However, there's a big difference between that and this. This is something that the the this is the dvd what is it though well and we've had this conversation before but what records are you missing i'd have to go out and physically look i think hold on i can hold on i'll go right now hold on. <laughs> he's so engaged today I know. I know. Took ten years, but we got him engaged. <laughs> ten years, but he's engaged. The lights are on. We can see him. He's talking. He's he's showing. It's show and tell. This is great. I'm missing Asylum. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So, was there one for the Elder? I don't um, think the Elder was ever certified gold. Was, was never it? certified. Okay. Yeah. So, unmasked so was, never... was hmm? those creatures. I think creatures, creatures were certified. Gold. Gold. Was finally certified gold. And okay. and and listen, you can I think anybody creatures now is platinum. If they if they well, if they do a recount, a recertify. Yeah, if anybody can go to the RIAA website, I think it's riaa.org. Might be wrong on that, and you can search for artists, and it'll tell you what albums and what awards each artist has gotten. Now again. That brings up the whole other discussion that fans have is like, well, of course the elders sold more than a half a million copies by now. Yeah, it probably has. It just hasn't been certified. And that I, if, usually means I, somebody has to pay 
either the artist or a label has to pay to have a little bit of accounting done to audit and certify that there was legitimately that many albums sold. Mike, I, I believe that Alive is actually Diamond now. Yeah, but it hasn't been certified that. Correct, correct. And right. just so you guys know, Diamond's what, 10 million? 10, 10 million. million. So, you know, I think I'm pretty sure because I think officially it's still only Platinum. Yeah. They used to talk about it being four million, four times platinum, but with with all the different you know sales now, it's got to be. And I'm talking worldwide. I'm not talking about just the United States. It's got to be easier, pretty close to diamond, I would guess overall. Yeah. Um, and and and, but let's also there. This is such a, I wouldn't say messy, but there's so many odd things about it, like. The RIAA awards are based on U.S. sales because U.S. has different sales criteria for gold oh, and platinum I, I wanted, I than to Canada point that does, than the Germany. Canada, yeah, yeah. Can, Canada is like a hundred thousand is platinum. I think, platinum fifty. Th yeah, fifty thousand is gold because smaller countries you don't need to sell as many. Go to Germany. So again. Each country around the world has different sales levels to achieve to achieve an award level. Now, labels, when you got bands like Kiss and Metallica and Motley Crue, labels love to do the, all right, you've sold 100 million albums worldwide. We'll create this monstrous plaque yes, of all your albums and, you know, and you've seen you've seen Gene's got one like that that's uh, at at the museum in Vegas. You know, a lot of those awards can just be, frankly, I mean, we did. You know, the awards that that I gave everybody for eight million listens on three sides of the coin. You can have an award made up for anything you want. Yeah. You can no, you know, nobody verifies and and certifies that three sides of the coin had 8 million plays. I mean, David Snowden made these beautiful awards for us. He didn't verify or, or, or do any of that stuff. The, the sales awards will have verifications. Like I couldn't go, I couldn't go to an award company and go, Hey, you made me the, the psycho circus gold album. Can you make me a Psycho Circus 2 million sales award? They'll go, no, because it hasn't been certified for 2 million. So we can't make that. You want, you want another gold one? We'll make you another gold one. You want, you know, I've got, I'm looking at you wanted the best, you got the best. And I'm looking at um, the very best of Kiss. Um, these are gold albums that are in front of me. I can't go there and say, make them platinum. They haven't been certified as platinum. And it's interesting how some people seem to have a real problem with this. Like when you make an award for us, they just, it seems to send them into a tizzy and I can't quite figure out why they care one way or another. Cause they, 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 they just, they don't like us. I mean, good God. I mean, you freaking walk into, well, you used to be able to walk into any mall and get awards made up. You could, you know, Hey, I want to, I want a bowling trophy. Can I walk in and buy a trophy and put a plaque? Sure. Here you go. Yeah. Well, that, that's another thing with, with awards. Again, I, I'm a pretty big award guy just because I think they're cool to look at. Um, you know, I, like my hotter than hell is an in-house in from Casablanca. But I mean, I got that from, I think, Bill Coin back in the day. I mean, those in-house ones are super sweet, you know. Um, before they had, uh, you know, that's what they'd line their office walls with yeah late uh, late labels would make in-house awards for things that aren't necessarily certified or, or or whatever i mean and it's still a hundred percent common practice today you know if you follow well, Michael, anything the, in the music industry an example of what you did with us yeah what do you what do you can't we just michael did that it's, as an, in, it's, an, it's an in-house it award to celebrate something put it this way for i'll just cut right to the chain you know, for what it's worth, this is our, we're just over 500 episodes, 10 years we've had, and it's accounted for over 8 million views. 
if we want to give ourselves a pat on the back, what do you fucking care? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it was, it was a gift to everybody involved. And, and listen, I sent it to, I've got a, a marketing assistant, Ray, who helps me with a lot of stuff. He posts this stuff and he tallies the numbers for me. I made an award to send it to him. He's not on the show, but Ray got an award as my way of saying, thank you for 10 years of helping on this. Well, you know, yeah. I, also, I, also made, I also made an award for the Music Biz Weekly podcast because it hit a million plays. So I sent an award to, to Jay Gilbert. Yeah. And co-host and I said you know here you go thank you it's it's just a thank you statement is all it is it's you know we're not making these awards to sell to people we're not doing anything else so you know back back to album awards from bands you know Eric Carr's family has obviously gotten permission from Kiss and or universal that they can go get any awards they want made up great they i'm kiss and universal aren't paying for those awards they just gave eric carr's family permission to go pay for awards that they want it's just like kiss gave me permission i can go get awards for albums that i was involved in if i want some of them they did give me some of them i had to pay for so don't don't freak out when you see an award made out to Eric Carr for an album that he wasn't on or Bruce Kulick for an album he wasn't on. They can go get awards for anything they want. I mean, that's just that's just the way there. There's not a lot of rules and regulations, really, for these awards. It's just somebody well, gives you permission the, to get one and you get it. The one I, I showed you that, you know, I just thought it was cool because it was a for the for the music video you just don't see a ton of those yeah before. so yep. i bought it for number one i knew where it came from the car family that alone because i got it from loretta you know what i mean it came from the kiss family I mean, from her family so i knew it was legit and b it's just a cool it's a different thing. than a it's a different kind different of award kind that you of normally award. see yeah i mean that's just the kind of stuff that I, you know, I like quirky stuff like that. I think it's, you know, and, and I know I've, I've shown it on, the, you know, because people say a lot of, you know, what's the cool? Well, it's all cool. It all has great memories. But that's one of the reasons I, you know, one of my go to things when I do get that. Plus, I get asked a lot that Peter Chris Mike. Yep. That, you know, from sure. I mean, there's only one in the whole world. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it would belong to Peter and. And it was cool because I remember reading that issue. I never thought I would own the, the golden microphone. The actual award owns, yeah. Yeah. owns, owns, owns. And my, my point in that is this. Collect what makes you happy. And also collect because it, it, it makes you feel, you know, happy. I, I, Again, you know, just just to go over since we're talking about awards and all this, stuff, if you follow my logic, again, if if you want to buy those newer awards that they're offering on Kiss Online, they're sweet. If you dig that, that's cool. But that's not that doesn't make me happy. I'm not going to run out and get the Asylum one. Just uh, now, I have it. No, I I want it to be one that was issued in you know in the mid '80s and was made out to the you know, the coffee guy, <laughs> somebody. That yeah, they, it, 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 exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, e even in that case, there's only one award with that guy's name on it. There's yeah. only one. There might be a hundred or hundreds of awards for that release, but there's only one that was made out and presented to that guy. And, and, and I know I've showed, I've shown it before on the show and I'm not going to go take it off the wall because that wall wasn't undisturbed or wasn't disturbed. It was, it's still undisturbed. You know, I have JR's Kiss Alive gold record. I mean, right when it went gold. I've Sean Delaney's gold record when Love Gun. And again, I, this isn't bragging. I'm just saying, I collected that because it made me happy. And I never went, oh, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on that. And then I'm going to sell. If, if you're buying this shit, to sell it you're out of your fucking mind if you're gonna put that but buy 
here, buy gold. I mean, if, if, yeah. if, 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 if that's what you're doing, this isn't an investment. Oh, hold on. It is an investment. It puts a smile on my face. Yeah. And if you're collecting for any other fucking reason, you're missing the point, man. You're just missing the point. It's got to make yeah. you happy. And if it doesn't make you happy, and if it makes you frustrated and mad, and if you sit and scream at eBay screens, don't do this. You're not, you're not in the right frame well, of mind. You know, and I'm in no position to give financial advice, but you bring up a very interesting point because, you know, I'll sit sometimes with Will and he'll be like, oh, you know, I could have bought a, a 57 Les Paul for $25,000 and now they're worth 300. And I'm, he's like, I didn't have 25 grand. Well, most people didn't, but if he would have taken five grand back in 1980, and put it in the market from a conservative standpoint, it's going to have a hell of a lot more than yes. two hundred fifty. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, exactly. Collecting items isn't a great way to generate future income. Which is why I really like Michael's way of doing things because he looks for the deal. That way he does not have to feel bad. Not that it's better than Mark, but he doesn't have to feel bad about the money that he spends when he finds, you know, rock and roll over or whatever it is, you, you know, you bargain hunt just like I do. Yeah. But you know, but, you know it, there, there, there will be things that I will spend the money on to Mark's course. point because it makes yeah. me happy. happy. I spent nearly, you know, for the creatures of the night box set and the, the, the colored vinyl plus the horrendous I shipping. Class, isn't it? I, I spent, I think, over 470 bucks on that. Why? Because it made me happy and it made me remember what it was like when Creatures of the Night came out. And yeah, it was, it was, it was worth every penny. Did I buy it? Because, boy, in 10 years, I'm going to resell this box set and make a profit. The odds of you making a profit reselling anything you collect are slim, slim to none. Let's be honest, slim to fucking none. Selling collectibles comes down to timing, 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 and timing. You know? Well, and I'd like to throw one more thing in with that too. The people who resell property, or not property, but collectibles, there's a lot of work involved from shipping to getting it up on eBay to however they're selling it. So if you have a collection that's worth five grand, don't expect to get five grand for it because there's no incentive for someone who isn't a collector or doesn't want everything in your collection to purchase that. There's no upside to it. So you, if you don't want to do the work of selling each item off individually, you don't have a collection like Mark that's going to, when he does eventually sell, is probably going to take it to Jacques or someone to do some type of an auction. You have to put in the work. If you're not willing to put in the work, then you need to sell it to someone at a discount, which is so about they can 50, make a profit. And about that's about 50 cents on the dollar so that yeah. they can make 25% after they spend 25% and the 50 to you plus all the work. Yeah, Some people I mean, just don't seem to get that. You 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 can't you can't have this is my personal opinion. If yeah. you are buying collectibles for uh, as an investment to resell, you can't be doing that with something that you have any personal attachment to whatsoever. You've got to, you've got to be able to sit here and go I don't give a crap if I've got an autographed Gene Simmons stage worn costume, I'm selling it. I have no attachment to this whatsoever. That's a huge hurdle that most fans can't get over. Like, oh my God, this is so personal to me that I have to get even more money for my personal connection to this. It's like, no, no. If you're doing, if you're buying and selling autographs and collectibles, you're doing it purely as a commodity and you could give a crap what you're buying and selling. That's, that's what it's got to come down to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so many people have a, um, collections and they so badly want to sell them to other collectors. But most of the collectors I know don't have the money to purchase a large collection. So if you truly need to sell it and you need the money, expect to be reasonable in the pricing. 
because you can't just look up every eight item on eBay and go, okay, well, here's everything. No one's going to buy that. Well, I, I tell you what, I just had a very, a, a good friend of mine, some, a good chunk of our audience, no, but I'm not going to bring up his name because he's not a big social media guy, but one of my best friends in the whole world, um, incredible kiss collector, in my opinion, the biggest kiss collector in, in the world, um, but also a dear, dear longtime friend of mine. Um, we were just talking about some stuff because there's some auctions going on now and some of the prices we were just as collectors. We're like, why is this guy starting this this price off at X amount? If you don't want to sell it, don't sell it. Because <clears throat> there's a bunch of stuff that, you know, there's, let's just say there's some Kiss stuff for sale right now that is extremely rare and extremely cool. But, you know, you're not going to get those prices. I mean, I understand the concept of throwing it up, you know, run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. I, I understand that. But there's also like, well, those things have never sold for that. Matter of fact, that's double what I've seen them sell for. What are you trying to do? I, I don't I, I don't understand that whole philosophy, because if you want to sell something, put it this way. If, if I thought that this flashlight, if I thought I could get ten dollars for it i wouldn't put first bid thirty dollars it just doesn't make any sense but i see that a lot of times in some of these auctions look our kiss geeks i'm one of them are we nutty and if we have a little bit of uh, disposable income do we get a little crazy if it's something that we really want guilty i, I get it I've, I've been there but i also am smart enough and i most people and i gotta tell you most people who are into hardcore collecting this stuff, and again, I'm not putting anyone down, but most people are business owners or they have disposable income. And you know how they got to be successful business owners and disposable income? They were smart with their money. And, and that's how come when I look at certain things, I'm like, you know, if this widget, this KISS widget is... Why are you putting 10 grand on it? I've never seen that sell for more than three. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you get 10, way to go, buddy. But <laughs> it's, and I've watched Mark walk away from stuff that he really, really wants because the price wasn't reasonable for him. Yeah, I, because at the end of the day, you just want to collect stuff that makes you happy. But I'm also not going to collect stuff that like, oh, I fuck i can't make my house payment or i can yeah That's you're not going to be stupid about it no i don't get me wrong i've seen people do sh stupid shit like that and then they regret it and and i will tell you i've been fortunate and, and not just me i've other collectors have been seeing people who like oh my god i need money and you don't ever want to i that breaks my heart but at the same time i'm like dude you, you're taking 500 for something i know you paid 2500 for don't get me wrong. I knew in my head it was only worth 200 to begin with. I don't know what you did that for, you know, but again, you know, and, and I've seen that the same thing with collecting audio and, you know, it, it's just also, crazy. Yeah. It, it, you know, anything, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to assess the value and know that you're purchasing it because it's something that you love that will make you happy, but you can't guarantee any more than, than you could with stocks and bonds that somehow you're going to turn around and make a profit off of it. Because sometimes you do, but many times you won't. Look, I've got well over hundreds, multiple, and this isn't bragging, it's just a fact. I've got hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that I've spent on Kiss stuff. But I didn't buy one thing, not one, to make a dollar. I bought it all because it put a smile on my face. I want those and, stints. <laughs> but my, my point is you have to go into kiss any collecting, if you want to collect cars. Collect something that makes you happy, but make sure you can pay for it and still feed your family when you're done. Mm -hmm. So... And, and, and again, I, I will go back to if you are dead set on collecting stuff as a business, you can't have a personal attachment to any of this shit. Mm -mm. A personal You're attachment right. and a personal attachment then makes it very difficult for you to part ways and makes you want to jack the price up beyond what's reasonable. 
if you have no attachment, you can easily sit here and go, listen, here's the value of this baseball signed by this person. Take it or leave it. I got. I will shed no tears one way or another if you buy it or don't buy it. It's just a product in a collectible store. I mean, t- Tommy, like, you know, Fan HQ does that with, with sporting goods stuff. Yeah. There's, there's no personal attachment there. No, but the one thing I got to say about Sean, he's really good at, is he, he assesses the value of an autograph, and he's always very reasonable. Yeah, with- but, but, but again, it's a business to him. It is, oh, it totally. is a, it's, it's 100% legitimate business. He's got retail store selling this stuff. He he's Chris Carter up, this weekend. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing. Maybe you want to go that way, but if you get to that point, you, you again, you just can't have deep personal attachment to everything that you're trying to sell because then you're never going to want to sell it. Right. Which is which is the rub for a lot of people that I know. I know some wonderful people who are huge Kiss collectors and other stuff too. And the, in the, the mere mention of selling it, they break out into a sweat. Well, I, Tommy, know? I honest to God, because I'm 57, I thought when I was 50, I thought right around at 55, I'd start piecing things out. But you're having I, fun. Yeah, well... I, that, that was exactly this. the point I was getting to in this. I'm having fun still. Um, well, and, I, understand and, you know, it's, I understand at some point I'm going to have to just because, again, I want to be a good steward to my family. But I'm, I'm telling you, by the time I do sell, I think the market for KISS stuff is going to be a lot lower. Put it this way. If I was in this to make money, I'd sell it now. But that's the impetus for this is fun and enjoyment. And right now I'm chasing a couple things that I want because I love it. Well, you which, know? which is, I'm very happy to hear you say that because I thought you'd be nice to me then when you do finally want to sell a few things. <laughs> um, but, but, but I get the, but I also do, I have to say, I really get the excitement, even though it's not something that I do on a regular basis. When we were down in Florida and you found the Holy grail, that was a lot of fun to be a part of, to see you negotiate that out. You know, the, the last... Not the one you're talking about, but the one we found at the store. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the last, in my, my personal opinion, the last time KISS collectibles had a spike in the time was right to sell was around the reunion. I don't think, and don't, and and this may sound gruesome. Don't take it the wrong way, but I don't think Kiss collectibles are going to have another spike until I don't think so either. until until band members are dead. And, and yeah. again, Michael, even then, I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because they're signers. Oh, I know they, that. They that's the that's the other anything. thing. That's the other thing. The band members themselves, current and ex band members, have basically hoard out their signatures onto everything under the sun. You want to go find a legitimate Paul Stanley autograph today? You can give yourself two minutes on the internet and you'll find a hundred percent legitimate, great looking verified autograph. It's not a problem to get any autographs from anybody in kiss. So that's already kind of, taking the steam out of the market for kiss collectibles. I mean, to me, it's not even about autographs anymore. It's about finding an item that is in itself, just rare, one of a kind, never thought to exist autographed or not. Doesn't matter. You know, and it's almost your, 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 the- your, 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 your award, Mark, your Peter Chris award. I mean, doesn't, you know, that's a one of a kind item. If you found another one of those kinds of awards out there that nobody knew existed, that's what you go after. To go after, gee, I got a copy of a live two autograph by Gene and Paul. Who gives a shit? I almost think it's there's more value or harder to find finding something old that doesn't have their signature on it. Well, it's funny because I I have had the chance to get that thing signed, but. Again, I've said this on the show. Matter of fact, I said it semi-recently. 
I, I, autographs to me mean nothing. I do not understand why people buy stuff autographed. With that said, there are a ton, and I mean a ton of autographs in this room. However, I got every single one of them. And <laughs> it makes, again, that's, I got all these autographs. Right, right now I'm looking at a Gene Simmons Axe promo. Looking right, right here. Signature up top. I got that in Toledo. I mean, I remember every autograph I look at. I'm, I, I remember when I got that. That's that is what makes autographs. And I know a couple shows ago I showed you that poster. I still got to put up. Well, you know with the whole poster band or poster. What's that? Toaster or poster? The poster I showed you where, where Bruce drew in the his thing on the jacket. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, well, that's what I mean. That. That autograph is special because it was a fun day. And I remember being with my wife and I remember waiting all day and I, all that stuff. I mean, I don't understand getting in, in an autograph and just going, I, I, I mean, again, if you do, that's cool. But for me, I'm like, eh, you know, it doesn't I, have any meaning. I do. I do think, though, for those of you that may not be aware, if you are looking for cool kiss collectibles or you're looking for legitimate autographed items go to the kiss live auctions page on facebook peter Corey runs that him and uh bill bjornholm and they run a really tight ship they do a great job and uh, kfb kenny fucking begley who does a lot with the band he's on there every week doing auctions and he's got a ton of autograph stuff so it's easy to find and you can find it from a trusted vendor so if you guys are looking for some of that go there well, I mean, you know, at, at, to, at that that point, Tommy, though, all you got to do is go to Paul Stanley's website, Gene Simmons' website. I mean, band members themselves are now selling autographed items. Right. Yeah, directly. I didn't know that, but I suppose, yeah, you can do that, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think Paul just had a Black Friday sale of extra broken guitars and mics from various tours that were in the warehouse. And he's like... Here you go. Come and come to my website. Pick out which one you want. What do you want the autograph to be? I will autograph this item. We'll get a photo of you, me autographing the item. And I mean, again, you can go straight to the artist and get exactly what you want at this yeah. point. Well, Mike, speaking of which, that was the one thing with Blackie. Blackie going now to Wasp. Blackie was not a signer. Now he's signing more than ever. He, his was never an easy autograph to get because he unlike yeah. gene and paul um you know i know people in the pay he just flat out wouldn't sign and there's some other rock stars that that are that i i know that richie blackmore this of course is back in the day he just didn't like to do it so well you know and i and i know with blackie one of the things he was telling me early on was you know the the freaking ebayers just make it make him miserable in wanting to sign anything because right. Well, you know, he's like, I don't want to sign an autograph and then turn around tomorrow and see it up on eBay. You know, and, 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 you know, and we had, he and I had the discussion when we launched the VIP, it's like, all right, you know, Blackie, one of the, one of the things fans are going to want are autographs. How many do we let them get? And what do we let them autograph? And, you know, it was like, no, we don't want somebody walking in with 20 albums, 20 albums, 10 of them are going to end up on eBay. You, you get two autographs and, you know, unfortunately, like so many musicians, there's no autographing guitars. There's no autographing musical instruments. There's no autographing pick guards because in many, many of those cases, those items end up in those memorabilia stores. You know, some, somebody owns a memorabilia store, goes out and buys two dozen pick guards has a bunch of cheap guitars back at their business. And then, you know, it's worth it for them to go spend $350 to buy some artists, VIP meet and greet to walk in with pick guards and get them all autographed. Cause then they turn around and resell them for thousands I, of dollars. I gotta admit, I never, I never understood that philosophy because if you're paying for the meet and greet, what fucking does it matter what they sign? And that's just me. I'm just, just the way I, because if, if you're buying an autographed, you know, piece of garbage, 
Les Paul copy with an Ace Freely signed pick guard. Well, you're buying a piece of crap Les Paul copy. You're stupid. I mean, you should you should let Natural Evolution just take <laughs> take, <laughs> exactly. take, take, take all your money. Yeah, well, put it this way, though. But if you paid the ace freely, matter of fact, I'm going to see Ace uh, this Saturday. Can't wait to see Philly and everybody, all my buddies. Uh, we're going to see Ryan and all those guys. So I'm pretty excited. But um, if you if you buy the Ace meet and greet and you bring in two pick cards, what does it matter to Ace? If you're getting, and I'm just throwing a number out there, say it's $50 a pop. He's, so he made his 50, he made a hundred dollars signing his name. I, I, I think from an artist standpoint, they're like, okay, I, I, I made 50 bucks, but you turned around and, and immediately are reselling this for $1,500. Then, I then want more Ace, of it. And, that, and there's such a market for that. I'll sign them and sell them myself. Well, that that's, that's why I think Ace is doing it now. If you want guitars autograph, it's $500 to get that autograph. That, that's my point. And I'm not picking on Ace. I'm just insert celebrity here who says yeah, that they, no. they don't want to sign a musical I, instrument. I, I, I think the whole point is the freaking eBayers have pissed off and messed with so many celebrity celebrities when it comes to autographs that, I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you, that there was one, I saw one fan who took all of the goodies they got from their um, Blackie Lawless meet and greet, put them up on eBay. The laminate, their autographs, their guitar picks. It's sort of like, fuck, you got every right to do it. But at the same time, you're just, I don't know, we're just like, uh, you know, the there's point there, of going there, to the meet and greet and getting there, there's, stuff a, there, there's so many fans that wanted to go but couldn't because it was sold out and legitimately cherished their items that were autographed. And here's somebody who went. And is, you know, has again, they have every right to do this, wants to make their money back to cover the cost of their meet and greet. I mean, that celebrities, celebrities and artists, I mean, let's go all the way back to the reason the VIP meet and greets even happened. Because artists got sick and tired of seeing scalpers make a thousand dollars on a $70 concert ticket where the artist is like, fuck that. I want to make the profit, not some guy standing on a street corner. Oh, and I don't blame them. I, I get it. It's just, I think that there's, it's so hard to control some of that stuff. It, 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 it is. It is. It's a hundred percent hard to control. But the it, one thing though, I can tell you is, is that they have to be smart enough to know, like, for instance, we were dropping, remember that night Mark that we were out and we did that Thayer thing. Mm -hmm. That was fun. That was a great night. Yeah. And we, we, picked him up at Lowe's, the hotel. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy who'd been standing out there. All oh, yeah. That's oh, Go ahead. Tell the story. It's a good story. Well, no, you, because you might know it, remember it better than I do. Well, didn't, didn't Tommy ask him? Uh, well, no, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy met him and signed one thing for him. Yeah. He yeah. had a whole pile of shit. Yeah. And he, he said he signed one thing. And when he got in the car, Mark, I think probably said, what, you know, what was the deal? And, and he just said, look, that guy's an eBay guy. He's not a Kiss fan. So I'm not going to sign more than one thing for him. He had a whole pile of shit. So it's like, sometimes it's relatively obvious who's there because they're a fan and they want the signature. I mean, also too, there's a lot of people who don't have a lot of money. Let's face it. And well, if I remember that when, when Tommy got in the car, I could say, I think I asked him or we collectively asked him and I, and I don't want to put words in Tommy's mouth, No, but I, I thought he said something like I could, when I started talking to him, I could tell all he wanted was an autograph because he knew I was a member of KISS. Didn't know anything about, wasn't he? Was. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and that's why he's like, well, why would I reward this guy? Somebody's, you know, and he's right because Tommy's time or Gene's time or any celebrity's time, it's their and, time. Right. And, and we were on our way to that. Yeah. If you're just there to try to make a buck off of them, then fuck you. Because yeah. I don't, I wouldn't go up, put it this way. I'm going to think of, say it's an, uh, cause I'm not a big basketball guy. You know, if Charles Barkley was over there, I'd maybe wave to him because I think he's an entertaining guy who does commercials, but 
I don't know much about his career other than he was a great basketball player. He seems like a nice gentleman, but why do I need his autograph? I don't care. Because there are people that just want to be around famous people. But it, and also too, even more to drive the point home is we picked him up to go to that conversation that we had with him and the meet and greet with all the fans who gladly paid and waited in line mm-hmm. to meet him and get some things signed. Now, on the other side of this, I can also understand if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of extra cash because of what's going on right now in America with you know, inflation and all of the stuff that you've got going on, you're raising a family, maybe you have some medical, whatever it is, and you really want to go see the wasp thing or a kiss thing or whatever, I can understand bringing a couple of extra items along with you, getting them signed and selling one or two of them off to help pay for that ticket to start with. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but you know, these guys that stand outside the hotel, I know a bunch of them, they stand out there literally 12, 14 hours a day. It's like, God, just go get a goddamn job because you can make (laughs) so much more money if you just actually show up for work. It's very hard for me to understand. And, and, you know, I think that KISS, to your point, Michael, has been really good about putting their autographs on everything. But they're trying not to also just sign for anyone for the sake of signing. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, there's there's probably something to be said that that all the members of KISS doing all their own autographing now and selling all that stuff. That's their way of, of killing the eBay market. Yeah. You know, screw them. Right to I, do you know, if you want you want a legitimate Paul Stanley beautiful autograph on his solo album, buy it from Paul Stanley. Don't buy it from some dealer at a Las Vegas, you know, memorabilia shop. Yeah. Hey, speak, speaking of Kiss autographs, I just because I've been on all of the, the cruises, they that is if if you that's a good place to interact with the band if you're lucky enough to because I will tell you, anybody who's been on the cruise knows after the event, a lot of people who want their, their album signed or whatever will wait around the elevator because there's only one way up, and one way down. But the band, God bless them, they realize if you're on the cruise, you didn't come here to sell fucking autographs. <laughs> they, right. you, it's, you know what it's... I mean? That Those are good places to get those sorts of things signed. Because they know you're invested as a fan. And, and put it this way. Say, say you were a celebrity. Would you want to sign stuff for people who are just going to go sell it? I mean, you're not no, going to know that's, that. That's but a, if, yeah. if you can tell. like If you can tell. tell. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why waste your time? I mean, I the, 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 these celebrities who've been around the block for many years they've got that that instinct where they can just go all right i can smell it's a reseller it's an ebay or you know like like you said about tommy i'll give them one autograph but i'm not giving them 20 autographs right and they're never standing out there with like the first album promo poster or uh you know a copy of dynasty or something like that they're always standing out there with glossy eight by tens and there's 20 of them and they're all exactly the same something that they probably literally downloaded off of Google and printed out. And, and then they're probably like, Oh, I don't, I don't need these personalized. Don't worry. Right. Don't personalize them. And that's another <laughs> great way to get people to sign your stuff. If you do run into a situation and one of these artists is like, well, you're just going to sell it say no, I'm not, please personalize it. And then just say one thing to them that would make sense to them that they know you're a fan. Yeah. You know, like Blackie, Great example. Okay. I don't know Blackie at all. Never met him, but I probably would say, yeah, man, the first time I saw you was 1985 opening for kiss on asylum tour in St. Paul, January yeah. 21st, 1986. Ran, 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 Randy Piper broke his leg and he was sitting on a, on a stool on stage playing. Whatever oh, okay. You were there. Yep. They just want some validation that you're just not someone that, to your point, it's just going to, but then there's also other fans who literally want everything signed, no matter what they want, every piece of memorabilia they own signed. And there's a place for that too. Cause I think, wasn't it the LA thing where Peter was signing and some guy came in a day early. Oh, yeah. and Remember that? Yeah. How many things did he get autographed? Yeah, stack. I, th- I, I, t- I have a good friend of mine. Who well, uh, took him eight hours. Yeah. I, I had a good before. friend of mine who's uh, really good with the friends with the guys in Metallica. And he took my friend and I 
um, you know, up North Michigan and we got to spend the day up there and, and I'll never forget, man, Lars, God bless him. I, that's a, I, another reason why people bitch about Lars. I watched that guy, this fan, and I'm not kidding. I think he had every fucking European single Lars. He must've signed a hundred things for this. And this was a, this was just an after show thing. This was, he just had yeah. the after show pass. This was no meet and greet fucking Lars signed every single and I thought to myself don't get me wrong this guy was a geeky fan because I did talk to him in line and everything but I'm like I even remember back then because this I think was on the black tour I remember thinking to myself you know dude that ain't just sign one or two you really need every one of those things signed there are people like that though too that they want everything signed and you want to talk about investment and resale the worst thing you can do is get stuff signed because I think it takes away from the value of, of the collector of what that piece is. Like if I'm looking for, well, like, you know, I'm looking for the double platinum promo poster. I would never want the double platinum promo poster signed by the band. I want just the double platinum promo poster because to me, it's so cool. I would love to own one. I don't want signatures on it. And if I do, I'll get them myself. Yeah, I mentioned that you know? on the show. I always try to get things personal i want it to mark yeah because it, it means something to me mm -hmm. that's all yeah no right or wrong just you know i don't know why we're yeah, talking again about this all this are. collecting stuff and autographs this is personal preference we're not telling you that you shouldn't buy this or you shouldn't want autograph if that if it makes you happy get it don't listen to us we're just telling you yep. our you know, yeah. we're all fanboys, and this is stuff that makes us. I mean, I, I I can tell you, I autographs have never meant anything to me. Even even asking to get something personalized. I mean, for all of the time I've worked with Wasp and Kiss and all the other bands I've ever worked with, asking them to autograph something, I just like it's just a name on some product. Now, granted, I'm in a different situation because for me, it's, I was there. I spent time, I worked with them, I did stuff with them. To me, that is worth so much more than asking for an autograph on something. You know, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever asked when I was working for Kiss, I don't think I ever asked them to autograph anything. I think I got autographs at the um, convention in Bloomington. Frankly, I don't remember what I got autographed or even if I still have them. I don't even know where they are. Um, but it just, it's never meant much to me. But to Mark's point, if, it, if it's important to you, great, go for it. I, that's, that's awesome. I'm just always been more about the experience of whatever that item is. I was there when this was acquired. I saw this happen. You know, I made, I was part of the team that allowed that to happen. Whatever. I mean, because I'm also the type of person that would have a very, very hard time selling items that I have a personal connection to. Well, so, it, you know, we're also in a different kind of mindset, Michael. I mean, you, Tommy, I, Lisa as well. At, at some point, especially when we're just because we're, you know, we're here because of KISS. I stopped asking for autographs years ago just because it's like you it's just, you know, you, you want the experience. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to throw in and without getting into too much detail, Tommy, the end of the Minneapolis show, when we were the last ones out of the arena, that was one of the greatest times of my yeah. life. And, and, and the funniest too, but that's what I'm talking. I'm not going to ruin that by asking, Hey, by the way, can, you know what? Let's just enjoy the experience. Yeah. And as, and, and especially now that I'm getting older, and I think I think the guys in the band love that more too. You just you know just the experience. It's well, you don't ask, you never ask for anything. You're never problematic. You're never you know like a you know um, God. Um, 
I'm sorry, I was just having a brain fart today. Um, 10 seconds, Bob. Yeah, it, uh, who's, <laughs> who's Danny, Danny. Yeah. Okay, Danny is the guy that's in charge of taking the call. Yeah, because they have so many layers of different people doing all these different things. Yeah. Anyways, Danny pulled Mark and Dr. Mark and I aside one day. He's like, you know, I love when you guys are here because I know I never have to worry about you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm never having to watch you. I never have to go, oh, God, I see a stack full of something under their arms that means yep. at some point in the next three hours, they're going to try and get to Paul for autographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't ever really ask for anything. And that it's, it's again, it's about relationships. It's about building trust. It's about all of those things. And, and to Mark's point, I would never want to give up the experiences because the experiences are last a lifetime. Not that the, uh, not that the, um, you know, autographs and stuff won't either. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's just to me at this point in my life. And so maybe for some of you guys that are younger, as I get older, experiences are everything. The experience and the memory is what's the experience, the memory, and knowing that that, that celebrity has some form of trust and respect back for you because they don't look at you as like, oh, all right, here comes more autographs. I'm seeing them tonight. It's going to be more autographs. Oh, I'm seeing them in another week. going to be more. They're just like, no, it's just good to see you. How are you yep. doing? How's your family doing? What do you think yeah. of the show? Yep. Then that's exactly the conversations that we have. And I've had times where I've had people like Paul or whomever come out of their way to say hello. Just because. You're not going to ask for something. Mm -mm. Nope. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and in all honesty, a lot of this stuff too, one of the biggest reasons it's so fun is traveling with that idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the weirdest shit happens to us when we go places. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah. I can't wait, man. 2023. We, mm -hmm. uh, we got some road tripping. What, 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 one of my one of the funniest and somewhat embarrassing moments, this was back on the Lost Cities tour at Mankato mm -hmm. when, when, you know, I had done some stuff for the band and the band said, you know what, we'll give you tickets and we'll get a group photo with you. And keep in mind, this was the reunion tour. They weren't doing that. Doing that at all. Yeah. That, 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 that back at the reunion tour, if you were back lucky enough to go backstage, remember that just before showtime, they would go through and clear everybody out. They would kick everybody out of backstage. Yep. You got a you got a sticky pass. You still got to go. They cleared everything out. But this show, they had allowed me and my parents backstage because they were going to take a photo with us just before going on stage. So we were, you know, we were, and I hadn't been working with them yet, but. I had done some stuff to help promote the conventions and I worked with yeah. Gene on some stuff. Um, so we were waiting around for them to come out to take the photo. And my dad is just, you know, he's being a dad. He's just walking around, looking at stuff backstage and he's looks into a, a garbage can next to a flight case and pulls out the um, baggage tags and the boarding passes for Gene Simmons, who flew into Minneapolis that morning. And he's like, want these? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no. I don't want kids to think I'm the guy who's digging through the garbage. But he wasn't. It was Gene who did it. It, it was my dad who did it. My dad still kept them. He put them in his pocket. It was just, it's like, yeah, it, it was a North, Northwest, uh, you know, he gave them to me eventually. I think it was like North Northwest Orient. From Chicago to Minneapolis, it was the boarding pass they and the baggage to, tag. They were trying to pawn off the uh, <laughs> the uh, bowling ball on me. Oh, yeah. Your mom's like, "Do you want to take this? It's really you want heavy. a bowling ball." I'm like, oh, I'm not going to take your bowling ball. But that's worth a lot, Tommy. I wouldn't do that. It's me. an undrilled. I know. I'm like, send it to ball. Mike. Send to Michael. You know, I've got Michael. one. That, oh, okay. that, that, was, that, that was when I was working with them. And when we did the bowling balls, I was like, I told signatures at the time. I'm like, 
I want two bowling balls because bowling has been a big part of our family forever. Well, so yeah, I got, I got one and I'm like, I want to give my dad a kiss bowling ball. Well, he Not told that he'll ever of, use it. He told me stories about the Winthrop bowling hall. Yeah. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Well, and I wish I would have known because I would have asked your mom about that, the Mankato. I don't know if you remember this or not, but I've never seen so many topless girls in my life at that show. I don't, I don't remember because you know what? By the time we got our photos, the show, they went straight on stage. So we yeah. basically ended up standing in the, you remember the main floor was all general admission. Yes. We stood in the back. Oh, so okay. we didn't, we, we, we didn't see much. So yeah, no, oh, hey, we just, we just, we just got the dinner bell from Mark people. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a so, double uh, dinner bell. Not only is dinner pretty much ready. My two favorite hockey teams are playing tonight. Matter of fact, the puck drops. It's puck drops now. So, uh, wings so we got, we got, up. we got, we got to wrap up. So guess what? We're not talking about kiss books. We're not going to redo episode one. Apparently not. We'll but save it for, uh, save it for 20 years, 20, 20 years. We, <laughs> at some, at some point we do have to re-record episode one so we can, we can get rid of the other co-hosts and put Mark in his place. Oh, that'll just, that'll just piss people off. Oh. Just the fact that I said that. We're not going to do that, people. Does anyone even know shit. that Mark hasn't been here since the beginning? I don't think anyone does. Really. No. A, few, a few of our guys that go all the way back. But. I, I, I will say this was a fun episode, though. This was another classic three sides. three sides of the coin episode where we start talking about a little bit of RIA awards. And we go down that whole rabbit hole of sales awards and collecting and autographs and, when, and yeah when michael and i started this what you just listened to was exactly the blueprint intent of what we wanted to do mm -hmm. today yep so yes we're icing on the cake at 10 years of talking about nothing we're the Absolutely seinfeld of podcast. We, yeah, we are the seinfeld <laughs> of kiss podcast this is the yeah. podcast about nothing and yet here you are over 90 minutes later, listening to us ramble on about nothing. 90 minutes you can't get back. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a refund for that. Yeah. There you go. Um, all right. All right, people. Uh, homework, I guess. Light or no light for Mark? Yeah, light or no light. Do you want, do you want a flashlight on Mark or not? <laughs> That's kind of creepy, dude. That is kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it does really got to get creepy I'm doing the whole show like this next <laughs> um do you have any sales awards do you have legitimate real sales awards either presented to you or like mark where you bought them from somebody else who got them um what what's what's your feelings on all this stuff about sales awards collecting especially collecting for financial gain Anybody doing that out there? Um, I'd love to hear like from Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> and autographs. Uh, just, what's uh, your feeling about what's your, what's your what's feeling that? on autographs? Yeah. What were your, right. some of your best kiss experiences too? I mean, we'd love to hear hear that stuff from you. Again, yeah, because we're all for all of us. It's all about the experience. Like Tommy said, as you get older. It's the experience and the memories that's that really means so much more than an item, than an autograph. Uh, you know that that's that's the important stuff in the world. Real, real quick, I want to throw one thank thank you, Spiro. Um, he, I got to do the Elvis walk from to the stage. That was uh, that was pretty freaking cool. Walking just behind the band. Oh yeah that was that well was you, know, you know i've got a video of that from the last time the original four guys ever did it yep oh yeah yeah if, yeah. if, if you if if our listeners haven't seen it go go search for well it's on the same channel you're watching this on youtube i've got a video because i pretty much was given the heads up this is a good chance this will be the last show of the four original guys ever so i turned on the video camera and walked behind the original four guys from the dressing room 
to their huddle and then the huddle up onto the stage. It's the last time Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter ever, ever did that. And you can hear comments from Doc that make it so great. Cats and dogs living together. Yep. Cats and, and and if you didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, you might be like, what the hell is he talking about? Cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. Ace and Peter are one. Gene and Paul are the other. Living together. It was that was a that was a tough that was a tough end of tour, man. Tough end of tour. To see it disintegrate. But all right, that's it. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. We'll see everybody next week. Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-477 for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.